Hello there and welcome to this screencast where we're going to review linear transformations a little bit. So it's been a while since we studied linear transformations. Let me start with the definition. So a linear transformation is a function. That's a certain kind of function. Linear transformation. Okay, it is a function that goes from Rn, some size regular real space, to some other size real space, let's say Rm. Uh, we usually call these T rather than F because it's a transformation. So basically it's a function where we're plugging in vectors and getting out vectors, uh, possibly of different sizes. And a few things have to happen with this function. Uh, first of all, I need to know that if I take a scalar multiple of a vector and plug that into T, I'm going to get C times the transformation of U. So I can either uh, scalar multiply, rescale my vector before putting it into my transformation, or put the vector into the transformation and then scale by the same amount afterwards, I should get the same thing. Also, I would like for uh, a sum of two vectors, if I take two vectors u and v and add them and then load them into my transformation, transform those, I should get the same thing as if I transformed each one individually and then added them later. The upshot of all this, really, I mean, you could put this into one uh, statement about linear transformations, is that they uh, keep linear combinations intact. You could put these two things together and say that if I take uh, two vectors u and v and I scale u by a certain factor c, and I scale v by a certain factor called d, in other words, form that linear combination, then what I get is uh, I can just perform the same actions to get that linear combination except after the transformation's been done. So that's what a linear transformation is technically defined to be. What we would like to think of a linear transformation actually being, though, in an intuitive level, is a motion or an action that we perform upon vectors that sit in R3 or R4 or R2 or something like that. So uh, that's the, where we're going to focus. When I think of linear transformations as an action that we perform on, real, on, on, on sets of vectors. Um, first of all, before we get into that, though, is one very important fact uh, to remember, and that is uh, every linear transformation can be represented as a matrix. Every linear transformation uh, can be written as matrix multiplication. As matrix multiplication. So, for example, I am plugging these vectors into a uh, a, func a function that goes from Rn to Rm. So this thing is in Rn, and what I get out here, let's call that y, that belongs to Rm. If this is a linear transformation, then I can think of that T of x, the transformation of my vector, as multiplication by a matrix A. Uh, that matrix, uh, since n x has n entries, would have, to have, would have to be m by n. Okay, so every linear transformation from Rn to Rm can be represented as matrix multiplication by a matrix that is m by n. And that's a very important fact because we can think about linear transformations purely in terms of algebra with matrices. So we're going to look at a few examples of uh, linear transformations here on familiar spaces and try to come up with a matrix that represents each one. Let me pause and clear the screen. We'll come back to that. So let's look at this transformation here that's going to uh, flip, flip, R2 about the y-axis. So what is that going to look like? Well, let me just draw R2 here, grab it, and there is my y-axis, there is my x-axis. Let me just draw a sort of random vector here. Let me put that in red here. Uh, it comes out to here. Let's call that vector x. So this transformation, this is a transformation that goes, it takes vectors in R2 and produces transformed or new vectors also in R2. Uh, for example, this vector here would be transformed into this guy over here. This Here's the transformation of x on this side. Uh, and so we see how this works. It's just going to flip around this y-axis. Now let's think about what the uh, matrix is that would represent this. So if my, what I said earlier is true, then if I take x and transform it, I ought to be able to multiply by a 2x2 two two matrix uh, to x and get the same results. Well, we have a theorem that showed up earlier in the course that says if I want to find out what this matrix is, then I can think about its columns. And the columns of this, uh, what we call the standard matrix for this transformation, the columns of this matrix are the transformations 
of the columns of the, in this case, two by two identity matrix. So I'm gonna go over here to my picture and think about what this action, the flip R2 about the y-axis, what does this action do to the columns of the two by two identity matrix? Let me uh, do a little quick uh, deletion of these uh, pictures right here. The two by two identity matrix has uh, two columns, obviously, one, zero, and zero, one. Let's have a look at those two and see what they do. Here's one, zero. Oops, not that. I want to draw my vector. Here we go. So here is, you can't see that because it's blue. Here, let's change it to red again. Here is one, zero. Let's just say for the sake of argument, that's one, zero. So where does it go under this flip about the y-axis? Well, you can see if I flip this around the y-axis, I'm going to end up with this thing over here. I'm going to draw it sort of crudely. So the transformation of that vector would be the vector negative one, zero. Okay. And what about the uh, second vector uh, or second column of the identity matrix? Let me change this to a green. I think this will show up okay. So let me draw the second vector here. And this is the uh, vector zero, one. Well, if I flip this about the y-axis, um, nothing happens to it. It is sitting on the y-axis. So if I flip it or rotate this y-axis around, uh, the transformation of x is going to be the exact same thing. So t of x here, in this case, t of uh, 0, 1 is equal to itself. That's a vector that doesn't move under this transformation. That's a very important property we're going to play with here in just a few minutes. Okay, so what is the matrix that I would multiply by to implement this transformation? Well, the standard matrix, what I'm calling this A, uh, it would be 2 by 2, and the first column would be the transformation of 1, 0, which would be negative 1, 0, and the second, so that's where this came from, and the second column would be the transformation of 0, 1, which is again just 0, 1. And that's my matrix. Now I can check this here uh, with a real example that's a little bit harder to think about. Let me think about this vector here. Let's call that the vector uh, 2, 1. Now when I flip 2, 1 about the y-axis, I ought to end up over here, uh, same height value. So the transformation of that vector would be, oh, sorry, t of 2, 1 should be uh, negative 2, 1. Now let's just see if that works out. If I take 2, 1 and transform it, let's see what happens if I multiply 2, 1 by this matrix. 2, or yeah, 2, 1. Now let's see, I'm going to have negative 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1. That's negative 2. And then 0 times 2 plus 1 times 1. So there we have it. So that matrix is, at least on this vector, and you can, it can prove that it works on all vectors in R2, that matrix performs this transformation for us. One more example, and then we'll be done with our review here. Let's look at a transformation again, going from R2 to itself. Later on, we'll have an example in R3. But R2 to itself, that's going to rotate uh, R2 counterclockwise by, 90, by uh, 45 degrees. I'm sorry, 90 degrees. Rotate counterclockwise by 90 degrees. Okay, and uh, again, let's draw our R2 over here. Here's the X or the Y axis, and here's the X axis. Rotate around the origin, I should say, otherwise this would not be a linear transformation. So if I take this vector here, it's going to rotate uh, kind of to here, and this is supposed to be a right angle. And the whole thing's just going to spin around this way, 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, let's think about what is its uh, transformation. Let's call that transformation T again. So what is its um, standard matrix? If I were going to rotate, what matrix would make that happen? Well, again, I just need to uh, think about what are the uh, images on the transformation of the two uh, basis vectors here, the 1, 0, and then 0, 1. Well, if I take 1, 0 and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, I'm going to end up up here at uh, 0, 1. So the transformation of 1, 0 is uh, 0, 1. Okay, and that's going to be the first column of my standard matrix, okay, 0, 1. Now, if I start uh, with 0, 1, let's just kind of overwrite that. Say so here is 0, 1. Let's call that x. Now, if I rotate yet 90 degrees, I'm going to end up right here. The transformation of 0, 1 is negative 1, 0. Okay, so that will be the second column of my standard matrix, negative 1, 0. Okay, so rotating, multiplying a vector in R2 by this matrix rotates at 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin.